When you renovate your property, instantly the equity value in your property increases, especially if you bought an undervalued property. So that's very critical. And if you buy in, in an area that's about to go up, like I said, if you move five minutes away from where it's booming, that areas, you know, by association will eventually go up. And adding equity by remodeling your property is the simply the, and the fastest way to increase your rental income. And you know what you say, more rental income means more money, means higher affordability, means you can go on and do more deal. And it brings in the trifecta of making money in real estate, which is more money anyway. So you get more income coming in. If you do, you remodel the property, especially if you move from a single family home to a multifamily home. Those are that critical things that you need to look at. People always ask me, how do I find contractors? And I always say it's simple, by word of mouth. If you've been doing your research, if you've been driving around the neighborhood, you probably have seen people building or people that have restructured their houses or done built properties at their backyard and making rental income. If you get in there and it's good what you see, you just ask the, the, the owner of that property and they'll give you that contractor's number. That's one. And also once you've gotten that, you need to get multiple bids. It's very important people to get multiple bids from different contractors. And always as much honest as possible that contractors will give you the, the budgeting of what you're going to cost you, always add a buffer of 10 to 20% on whatever costing that you get from the contractors. It's very, very critical when you're doing your renovations. Mm. The one thing that I will add, though, when it comes to doing renovations and potentially getting equity in after renovation is it depends. It's not always an op automatic thing. Uh, I think one of the things Echo highlighted is if, if you've bought right, then renovating will likely have the, the intended consequence or intended effect of you know you being able to charge a slightly higher rental and that is of course dependent also on what the rental trend in that area is because it doesn't help you doing renovations and thinking you can sort of hike up rental uh, at a certain price point only to find that that area the highest is you know a certain amount so you want to be clear on not only what you're buying at but also what the rental in that particular uh, um, area is but also one of the really important things and we've covered this before is to not over capitalize so when you do your renovations be very careful of changing things that you know sort of add value and want somebody to live in that particular apartment without over capitalizing because i think one of the things and echoes mentioned this i do quite a number of you know different renovations in the different uh, properties and it's very easy to want to put sort of top finishes on uh, in your know, various properties but you really do have to be careful to not overcapitalize. So don't go, uh, for example, for gold taps that could easily cost you over a thousand rand for a tap. Uh, they are, you know, really good stainless steel ones that cost a fraction of that, that do the job and it's still aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So that's something that's very important that you don't put in more money than what you'd eventually be able to get out if you were to exit uh, that particular um, asset. Just to add on to what you've said, you renovate when you know that you can convert, of course, you can also renovate the single family homes, your townhouses and the rest, but you need to be very careful you don't overcapitalize. But in this instance, I'm talking about freestanding properties that you can convert them to multiple um, rental or uh, multiple family home. That you, when you renovate them, you're actually going to increase your rental because you're going to have a, a bachelor that you can rent out for 2000 2500 so it's adding more but your 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 loan payment is still low so those are the things that i'm talking about but when it's only single family like what zama is, is talking about very very critical do not overcapitalize you are in for business and not with your heart so do not capitalize now step number 10 find a tenant and what is, where is the best way to find tenants? Private property. Private property is there. They've got their, they've, there's a website. They've got their portal where you can list on and get good tenants to come in. And those are the things, once you find your tenants, you can, you know, do a credit check on them. Each tenant, like Zama said, 
each tenant qualifies for a free credit report. So if you're not uh, listed or if you're not a member of TPN, Michelle's company, you can literally get a free credit report from a, a potential tenant that's coming in. Critical, do not put people in on face value. And I'm talking from first-hand experience. I do not want anybody to make that mistake that I made that cost me a lot of money. Don't put people in on first-hand experience. Do the hard, you've gone through all the hard work and only when it's time to, for you to collect, you, uh, you, you flop. Use the same energy that you've, gone, you've used to collect the money. And if you're going to use the same energy, make sure that you've done proper credit check on that on the tenant. Criminal records needs to be checked. And once you've done all of that and you've listed your property on private property, if you've done that, you're going to get a lot of tenants coming to you. So you will have a lot of options on which tenants to actually choose. They come to you and you will choose them.